So now let's get into the definition of what a mental disorder is and the categories of different disorders. So the previous version of the DSM has a very simple uh, definition. A disorder must cause distress and or disability, which is defined as an impairment in one or more important areas of functioning. And this is very simple, uh, basic, and kind of, you know, you just have these two key features, distress and disability. Uh, the DSM-5 tried to be a bit more specific. So a mental disorder is a syndrome characterized by a clinically dis significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotion regulation, emotion regulation, or behavior that affects a dysfunction in the psychological, biological, or developmental processes underlying mental functioning. Uh, mental disorders are usually associated with significant distress in social, occupational, or other important activities. So it kind of fills in a bit more, you know, like what kinds of uh, disabilities uh, functioning, it specifies what kind of functioning, but essentially it's so general, you know, psychological, biological, developmental, it's like everything. And so in the end, it's really not that different. And the core features are really this two key elements that you have some kind of dysfunction, obviously a disorder, some kind of dysfunction, but also that there is some kind of subjective personal distress. And that turns out to be a really important uh, practical kind of property of the definition. So obviously something has to be wrong, uh, but that alone is not enough. So you have to have the situation where subjectively people feel like also that this disorder, this problem, whatever it is, this dysfunction is actually a problem for themselves subjectively. Uh, and this is really important. You can be kind of a strange person. Uh, you know, uh, people may regard you as unusual, uh, maybe even, you know, very strange. Um, but if it doesn't cause you a, any kind of distress, and I guess there is kind of this edge case here of like how much distress it might be causing others, but really critically, it has to be uh, something that's causing distress to the person. And so there's, you know, all these things you see in movies about people getting locked up for being, you know, uh, by other people, like locked up by their family members in psychiatric hospitals. Um, that doesn't really happen anymore due to the fact that one of the key criteria is that the person themselves kind of essentially has to commit themselves. They have to say, oh, I, I, I really recognize that I need help. And, you know, this plays out in a lot of different interesting ways, especially in the case of a, a substance use disorders. Part of this is just this overall trend, at least in the United States, where, you know, people who actually need treatment are also can't even get the treatment that they need. And, you know, this huge uh, travesty of putting all these people with schizophrenia out uh, on the streets. Um, so these are, these are the kind of negative sides of this diagnostic situation. And then it's also important to kind of qualify the disorder so uh, you, you, you exclude kind of, you know, uh, accepted normal kinds of behavior, like, you know, if you suffer from a, a loss, uh, death of a loved one. Uh, so it's normal to be kind of, you know, disaffected in that situation. And therefore it doesn't count as a disorder. Socially deviant behavior, uh, conflicts that are primarily kind of social in nature are also interestingly excluded. So being kind of a radical or being different or having different kinds of beliefs, different cultural behaviors, you know, they try to really uh, kind of clarify that it has to be something about the kind of the basic functioning of the, of the system and the, and the individual. So here are a list of the, some of the most important categories in order of prevalence uh, specified by the DSM-5. And one of the big Kind of controversies and issues we'll talk about is the, you know, the, the very existence of these categories. What do they mean? Are they real? What, what's the utility of these categories? But uh, setting that aside for a second, we'll just look at what they are. So anxiety disorders, this includes generalized anxiety disorders, panic and phobia, uh, depressive disorders, major depressive disorders, substance use disorders, uh, basically, you know, addiction slash dependence, um, also very prevalent. Uh, bipolar disorder, and now we're getting down to sort of things that are, you know, less than a percent or so. Eating disorders, uh, anorexia and bulimia, uh, schizophrenia, 
uh, which is perhaps the most prototypical case of these kinds of disorders. Uh, and then, uh, but also fairly rare, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, um, OCD, and then trauma and stressor related disorders, PTSD. Uh, we'll go through each of these and kind of talk about what are the defining characteristics and some of the treatments, et cetera, that are specific to these particular disorders. Uh, there's also a separate category of developmental disorders. So ADHD and autism uh, that are specifically recognized, you know, as something that occurs early in development, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, the rest of those uh, kind of quote unquote standard ones are things that are associated more with kind of adult level. And then there's this other really interesting category of disorders called personality disorders that are a little bit uh, hard to understand. Um, they seem very similar in many ways to the other disorders, the kind of, you know, standard kind of list of disorders that we talked about first, but um, they're uh, kind of more persistent, more trait-like. Um, they're perhaps less severe overall, less disabling, less distressing. Uh, they are focused more on these kind of social interactions. So whereas the kind of, you know, personal, the, the standard kind of disorders specifically exclude this kind of individual and society, social kind of interaction. Personality disorders do focus on those kinds of issues. Uh, some of the ones that are kind of recognized here are kind of schizoid, sch schizotypal. Uh, and so this is sort of uh, cases of high levels of social anxiety and withdrawal, um, antisocial, borderline, histrionic, narcissistic, associated with kind of that uh, personality variable that we talked about in, in the personality chapter of uh, uh, the neuroticism and maybe also affecting agreeableness. Agreeableness being this kind of social uh, warmth or, or affiliation kind of uh, tendency. Um, and then some other uh, personality disorders are avoidant, dependent, obsessive compulsive. And so, you know, obsessive compulsive, what's the difference between OCD and obsessive compulsive personality disorder or the schizoid type of things which are very much like schizophrenia, but not considered to be, you know, actual schizophrenia. And so it's a little bit unclear exactly where those kind of boundaries are. So you can kind of go back and look at that big five uh, factor list of personality disorders and, and see, you know, uh, each of these different types of major personality disorders can be seen as kind of an extreme form of one of those big five factors. So antisocial is just basically extreme disagreeableness, right? So lack of kind of social affiliative type of behavior. Avoidant is uh, somebody who's high in neuroticism and kind of also very shy, so low in extroversion, similar to uh, what we see in the schizoid. Uh, borderline is a particularly challenging personality disorder. We'll talk about this a little bit more later but just kind of very high in, in neuroticism, very low in agreeableness, and also low in conscientiousness. So kind of in a really extreme form of some of the most quote unquote negative aspects of these personality dimensions. Paranoid is, uh, you know, kind of very high level of neuroticism, basically. Uh, obsessive uh, compulsive personality disorder is just a high level of conscientiousness. Uh, schizoid is, again, uh, kind of similar to this avoidant, low extroversion, narcissistic, similar uh, to antisocial, but also some other factors, right? It's not just the big five factor of agreeableness. There's, there's also sort of a strong, obviously, uh, corresponding focus on the self. 